Hello there! Welcome to another episode of Jeddah Workshop. My name is Ash, and this week we've got a special guest. This is... Logan. Logan, my nephew. And um, in... How old are you, Logan? At six. He's six. So, in this video, we're going to show you how I made this helmet. So, I scaled this one down to fit him, which would... Be, I think I scaled it to like 90% so it doesn't actually fit on my head and that's why I have roped him into this video which he's super happy about, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's dive in. So whether you've printed this helmet yourself or you've received the parts, you should have three main pieces, the front, the back and the top and uh, the little comlink antenna. What you want to do first is um, start sanding the edges where you're gonna glue them. Um, this basically gives us a really good um, line, like they'll just connect better, but also um, giving a slightly rough surface will be better for the glue. And then you wanna grab a soldering iron that you don't care about too much and just do some little dabs um, of glue, sort of every inch or so down the seam, piece it together and then carefully keep it all in line and then use a soldering iron to go down the seams. So what this does is it, it holds the pieces together so that you don't have to you know, sit there waiting for 20 minutes, half an hour. And it also um, just adds a little bit of strength to the whole helmet. I just use um, Gorilla Glue, just normal all purpose super glue. And um, yeah, you don't need much because it expands sort of like three or four times its size. So just a dab every, you know, 10 mil around the helmet will do absolutely nicely. Just make sure that you get all the pieces really perfectly aligned because otherwise you're gonna run into problems later down the line trying to, um, you know, we have to fill these these seams in, but if they're misaligned, it's just a nightmare, you know, it's obvious. So just be really careful at this stage. Um, I always do the inside first with the soldering and iron to sort of weld it together, but um, I, I've started doing the outside as well. I mean, you're gonna fill this line in anyway, so it doesn't matter. You, it's only gonna add to its strength and to it just all holding together while the glue sets. So. Um, and once it's all done, it's um, you know it's pretty firm. Don't go throwing it against a wall or anything. But you can see how strong this holds together just from the welding seams. You know this is fresh glue, so um, I'm going to leave that for a good few hours. So this is some stuff called uh, primer filler um, by Genolite, and what this does is just give a, a really nice base surface to start filling. Um, it's it's different from normal like primer spray paint in that it's a little bit thicker so it just really helps to start filling in the the sort of minor um, printer lines so I just start off with a good base coat of this before I do anything else and just keep going until you get um, the whole helmet done um, definitely wear a respirator. I would also recommend doing this outside. I couldn't because it was absolutely chucking it down with the rain outside and um, I just really wanted to get this done. So I don't recommend doing it inside. Do it in a, a well ventilated area. But yeah, first big old coat of that. Okay, so um, I thought I'd use some uh, different kind of filler um, because I was, this is called Motip. Uh, finishing stopper for car bodies or finishing putty um, I was using 3M spot and glazing putty um, but it's quite expensive and I found this for a bit cheaper so you know I thought I'd experiment with it and just used it exactly the same put it all over the helmet um, every surface avoiding any details but what this does is um, it helps to fill the, the seams where you've joined it together and glued it and welded it with the um, soldering iron and it also helps to fill in all the printer lines so that's what I'm doing here I just work my way around the whole helmet if you're wondering what the carrier bag is for um, I ran out of rubber gloves so uh, that's all I had yep I am glamorous or maybe just northern 
Okay, next up is uh, everybody's favorite job, sanding. If you don't like sanding, don't 3D print helmets. Don't buy helmet kits, just don't even bother because there is a lot of sanding. Um, so here you can see the helmet has had this stopper on all over it and I've left it to dry overnight. It, I think it actually dries in about six or seven hours, but I left it for, you know, 24 hours. Um, and I use a mouse sander to begin with, um, with 120 grit sandpaper. And this is just to get all the, the high bits, the sort of knobbly bits, and just to save my arms basically, because you gotta go over the whole surface by hand um, just to get into all the areas. So it's nice to just, you know, help yourself out a bit, but it's still gonna take a while. So stick some headphones on, listen to a podcast, listen to some music, whatever you enjoy doing. Turn it into a therapy, you know? It's, uh, it really does become a meditation. Sort, sort, your, sort your thoughts out, you know? Relax, go to that nice place of just gentle nothingness. So once I'm done with the uh, mouse sander, I then just tear off a little scrap piece of, again, same 120 grit sandpaper. I don't go down in grit, not at this stage. Um, there's lots to do um, first. Not to not to put you off or anything, but um, yep, yeah, I just go over the helmet again by hand, um, getting into any areas that I've missed with the mouse or I couldn't get in there. Um, and again, just do it really methodically. Start off in a in you know a corner and just work your way around piece by piece. Um, so what I noticed about this Motip stopper that I hadn't used before is in the corners, especially in the in the grooves and the seams where I needed it the most. As I was sanding it, it just all started to chip away, like completely crack and crumble in these specific areas that I needed it, and. Um, from using the 3M. Basically, you can't use um, this kind of stuff um, in, a, in a gap that's over three millimeters because it just won't dry properly. It might dry on the outside, but on the inside it'll still be soft. However, I didn't. Um, this really wasn't over three millimeters. It was literally just doing the, doing the corners and the seams as normal. And I found that it really didn't work well whatsoever. Um, the, the the simple flat surfaces it was it was great I'm not gonna lie it was easy to apply it's just like toothpaste it's I did notice it's a lot um, more liquidy than the 3m um, so the flat surfaces were fine but for some reason the corners were just terrible so um, I won't be using that again so please learn from my mistakes by all means try it if you want but um, I think it's not very good sorry Motip so um, here I'm just cleaning off all the sand dust with just with an old rag uh, and getting it ready for another coat of uh, filler primer. And what that's going to do is the decent areas that are already looking good. It's just going to give it a nice um, another you know good layer to fill it, but also it's going to highlight all the areas that still need a bit of work. Um, you know, I'm not lying to myself here. These corners where it's all crumbled are going to need a lot more work. So um, it's just, you know, the nature of, of experimenting with new products. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it works rubbish. But you've got to try these things, haven't you, to know. So, um, yeah, again, I just go around the whole helmet. I start on the bottom with the areas that I can't get to once it's on a stand. <clears throat> Um, I'm using like a car jack here. Yeah, so I'm getting all the underside areas and the sort of side areas that um, you, you can't get to just spraying on flat. Then uh, I'll stick it on the stand and just go over it. Um, again, just use it like spray paint. Do it at a distance. Um, and don't don't overdo it in areas. You can just do it in, in you know, light strokes. Um and then leave it to dry for 20 minutes and come back to it. So as you, as you can see with another, with a layer of filler primer, um, the stopper and then another layer of filler primer, it's actually looking pretty good, but you can still see just the little scratches and imperfections. That's what the primer is, the filler primer is really good for. 
is highlighting those because then you can just add some more filler on it but as you can see these edges these corners are just terrible um, I was you know by this point you're hoping to have a really good base surface and just find out just be finding the sort of scratches that you want to fill in you don't really want to be doing major work like this after you've already done a load of sanding but um, such as the way so all I'm doing is finding those areas where it's sort of crumbled and just sanding them down a little bit more just to make sure it's not going to happen again so there's no more crumbly loose bits. I want to completely get rid of them, sand it down so I can fill it all over again um, and this time I will use some a completely different product. Enter the Lechler 1K Stopper. Um, so my friend's dad is a uh, panel beater, so I asked him what he used because I'm guessing if these guys use it every day and he's an amazing at his job, you know, they're going to know the good stuff and they're probably going to get it at, co at some sort of trade price or at least know uh, a good cost effective product to use, so he recommended this. Um, so the previous one... The, the 3M was like 20 quid a tube. The Motip one was 10 quid a tube. This stuff is about five or six pounds a tube, um, but you have to pay delivery on that on top. So I think I got, I, I ordered like two or three, just cause he said it was good. And it actually is amazing. It's sort of in between. It's not as thick as the 3M, but it's not as liquidy as the Motip. Um, I found and it's so it's just really good to apply and it sands super well so I thoroughly recommend this if you can find it it's not on Amazon or eBay I had to find it from a proper website I think it's called Express Paints I bought it from um, thoroughly recommend this stuff it's it's awesome but don't get all excited just yet because before that guess what more sanding so again, I'm still at the 120 grit here. I, I, I'll go over the whole helmet. And the trick is here to do it sort of gently. You still want to, you know, sand down the excess, but you don't want to rub it all off. Otherwise, this whole process is just all for nothing. So just tear a little piece of sandpaper off, stick your headphones in, and just do it really gently at this stage. Once I'm uh, happy with, with the overall finish, I'll then downgrade to 240 grit sandpaper, do the whole helmet again. And then once I've done that, I'll go down to uh, 400 grit sandpaper. It's, it's really not that bad. If, if you've made it through this stage, seriously, you're doing amazing because this is, it's, it's torture, it's pain, it's, it's terror, it's, it's, it's the stuff of nightmares. It's, it's not that bad. It just, it's just arduous work. So, are you going insane yet? <laughs> Repetition. So it's more filler primer again. Basically, just keep doing this process. Um, use the filler primer to fill in, to keep filling in the smaller lines and highlight the parts that still need areas that you want to work on. And then use the stopper to fill in those areas. Sand it, filler primer again and just keep doing it until you are happy with the finish um, because everyone has different standards you know I actually wanted to do a really good job of this just because I'm not making it for myself I'm making it for my nephew so I just wanted it to, to be really good so he's happy with it he's not even bothered you know he's six but I, I'm bothered so yeah do it until you are happy with the finish Look at this, that took me like 10 minutes just to do those final little bits just to get it perfect. So once that dries, again, just go over it really gently with 120 grit sandpaper, then go down to 240, and then I do 400 over the entire helmet just to get a really nice polished finish uh, ready for its final prime and paint. So I'm just gonna do one last layer of filler primer now just to triple, triple, quadruple, billion time check. And so I ordered the the normal, um, I think it's Jensen's. It's always come in yellow, but they sent me black. And I was like, what? How can, how can anyone use black filler primer? Like, how does that even exist? It's black. Um, so I'm really just kind of confused and using it anyway, but it's exactly the same process. And 
actually it turned out to be so much better than the yellow it actually it it goes on jet black but it dries sort of a, a, a medium dark gray and it's actually amazing for spotting any imperfections I also feel like it's a lot thicker than the normal yellow filler primer um, and on the helmet builds that I've done since I've only used this instead of the yellow and um, it takes me a lot less to use it because it's thicker so um, it's actually cheaper you know it's more co cost effective and uh, I love it plus um, black clone trooper helmets just look sick they look like um, what they're called uh, shadow troopers or something it, that's just, it's just awesome um, and by this point I'm really just bored of filling and priming so um, I've not done another layer of filler primer I've just gone straight in with the white here because I just want to see it white um, nobody is this much of a perfectionist <laughs> other than me you could see from the previous clip I went ahead and did even more filling um, because I'm a psychopath but anyway look it's white it's starting to look like a clone trooper yay again just do it in really light coats don't go um, wild here because if you do it too thick and it starts running you're gonna have to wait for it to dry and sand it all over again and repaint it again you know and wait 24 hours in between each time it's just not worth it Trust me, I've made the mistake so many times. I just do it really lightly. I walk away for 20 minutes, half an hour, come back, do it again. Leave it another half an hour, come back, do it again. Um, and paint is much harder to sand off than, you know, sandable filler because it's paint. It wants to be on there. So just just take your time. There's no rush. So a friend reckoned me, recommended me, um, who's an amazing builder, um, some spray paint called plaster coat matte white and honestly it's awesome it's it's like spraying chalk it's a bit kind of feathery like it goes all over the place it's not the best can but the paint itself is wicked as long as you do it in light coats it's a really good finish and it's a really good color white particularly for you know Camino clones um, if you want a shiny use gloss you know white gloss paint like straight out, straight fresh out of Camino. Um, but if you're gonna sort of weather it up a bit, I would recommend using matte white and this paint is really good. It's pretty cheap on Amazon. Okay, so next up is the exciting part. You start to do the details. Um, so I've masked it up here using uh, frog tape, um, delicate surface frog tape, because I learned my lesson last time. And I'm just masked it off for the gray areas. So that's the band around the top back of the helmet and the nose grill. And I just use good old normal um, primer gray paint, you know. Um, I think it's a Motip gray primer and it's, it's pretty wicked. However, I didn't prep the surface before. I just sprayed straight onto the white um, because I'm an amateur. Um, always just sand it a little bit even if it's just lightly because I don't think I have a close-up here but it starts to sort of crack um, once it dries and then you just have to sand it and repaint it anyway so just 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 do it trust me and once that's dry you know wait at least 24 hours and then I'm I masked that off for the black band um, but yeah mask everything off just leaving the band and I just used a normal black satin paint. I can't remember the brand here, but it's it's pretty good. You know, it's black. Alrighty, so there it is, looking looking beautiful. So once you've got your basic colors, your white, gray, and your black, it's time for some weathering. For that, you're gonna need some black acrylic paint, some water, some kind of sponge brush, and some toilet, sorry, kitchen roll. Squirt a little bit of your acrylic black paint on onto your palette and uh, water it down I really recommend using more water than less I know it's like tempting to just get it on there um, or if you're wondering what the hell I'm doing and it looks crazy I'm using the dry brush method so you slap some really watery paint onto your helmet and then you um, wipe it straight off and what it does it gets into all the little crevices where sort of mud and dirt and dust would just naturally accumulate so you just tend to paint in those areas 
um, but you want to brush it off straight away um, and I just recommend using more water than less because you can always put more on so yeah just build it up from there take your time if you get any runs because you you know it is quite watery um, just dry those off straight away because you, they'll just dry like streaky and you don't want that it'll look bad also when you are wiping it off with the paper towel um, try to do it sort of randomly don't do it with any grain or lines because you'll see streaks you can sort of wet it down a bit afterwards and go over it again but um, it's best to just do it as and when because it's it's surprising how effective this method works leave that to dry it doesn't take long it's just acrylic paint and then um, what I'm doing here is just going over it with some matte uh, lacquer this is just by high coat um, again if you're doing a shiny use gloss lacquer and get a, get a really nice shine on it um, but if you're weathering it I would recommend using matte gloss um, and it's exactly the same as spray spray paint just do it in in um, gradual layers because again you don't want it to run and streak and obviously it's harder to see some something which is see-through but um, yeah just just reserved control yourself and it'll look absolutely wicked but this will just help to protect that amazing paint job you've just done so now it's time to do the uh, nose girl wire mesh and um, don't ask me where I got this from I, th I think it's like window screen you know like fly screen that but it's kind of gray silver and it should be black so here here I am just like trying to paint it black I get there in the end um, and it's wicked because it dries in about five seconds for some reason and um, all I do is then double it over and I just use hot glue to keep it in place and don't forget the all-important uh, comlink antenna here I just use normal super glue here Gorilla Glue I think I did do a little bit of filler primer on there just to fill in the printer lines and then sprayed it black dead easy it takes five seconds um, so I wanted to make this a little bit more comfortable um, my nephew is a little bit precious. <laughs> I wanted to make it super comfortable for him, so I just cut up some black felt and uh, put it in with a heat gun. So next up is on the uh, visor. It's definitely do a, a, a brew break there. So this is my first time using a um, sort of welding or grinder shield that I got off Amazon. It took me ages to find it. Um, they're meant to be really good. So all I'm doing is just, I use a piece of paper to very roughly draw around the visor shape, then cut that out, lay it over the grinding shield and cut that out, um, leaving about, you know, a centimeter, two centimeter um, space all the way around the edge so that I can then sort of sand it and glue it into place. Um, this stuff is wicked because it's really easy to cut um, anything I've used before is just sort of shattered or I've, it's been so thick I've had to use a heat gun to bend it into into shape um, this stuff is really good and this was about a tenner and um, if you do it right you can get at least three vi like helmet visors out of it so that's you know three pound 33 um, for a wicked visor and um, to hold it into place um, so I'm just sanding the edges here to give uh, a good surface for bonding. And I'm using this stuff called uh, plastic weld. Um, I'm using it in a bag because again, I just still don't have rubber gloves um, and you're not really meant to use your fingers like skin. But I mean, I think I did because, you know, I'm from Yorkshire and uh, we're hard and stupid. Um, skin's made of asbestos. But yeah, I used a mixture of sort of um, Heat glue, heat glue to keep it in place and then the plastic weld because it's basically a two-part um, material it's kind of the consistency of blue tack you rub the pieces together just like plasticine and stick it on and then it dries rock hard but you sort of do have to keep the visor in place because it it's obviously not curved it wants to sort of spring up um, so it did take a bit of experimentation here um, but I still think these, these visors are wicked because they're just the most realistic. Um, I still do have skin on my fingers, by the way. I still have fingers. I still have hands. They didn't drop off. 
but yeah, don't don't follow my lead. So there you go, um, I hope you enjoyed that build, thank you very much for watching, if you um, want the 3D printed parts to build this helmet yourself they're available on my website or if you are a 3D printer yourself you can also get the files there and just do it completely from scratch. Um, I've been Ash, this has been Logan, thank you very much. And please subscribe. And please subscribe, uh, see you later. Bye. sitting in this video which is really happy about aren't you yeah <laughs> really so if bye you're not allowed to show your face yeah. we're gonna have to do it again oh my head i don't want to do it again doesn't sound so bad to me i can't <laughs> breathe